This video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. It's no secret that throughout the years my hair has been thinning on the top. Not something I'm exactly proud of, it's primarily why I wear a hat, but eventually I decided it was best to just shave it all off. Thing is, upkeep can be a pain in the ass. I gotta go to the store to buy new razor blades, shaving cream, it's super inconvenient. And thus sometimes I just let it grow out and ask my barber to do the job for me all while I'm looking like a young Hispanic George Costanza. Luckily, Dollar Shave Club is there to save the day. Dollar Shave Club is everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. But don't let the name fool you, they don't just specialize in shaving products, but top of the line total body care products, such as shower products, oral hygiene products, skin products, hell they even have butt wipes to make your ass even feel like a million bucks. If you're interested, you can get started with Dollar Shave Club's new $5 starter set, all of which is delivered to your front door. You'll get the executive razor handle, a cassette of four razors, and trial sizes of Hawaiian ginger face cleanser to keep your face looking nice and clean, and Dr. Carver's shave butter. I'll admit the shave butter was new to me. I was used to standard shaving cream, but this ended up working amazingly well and spread nicely on my chrome dome. My shave was nice and smooth. The blades basically glided across my scalp with little to no irritation. So join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. Get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash Johnny today. And now on with the show. So I needed a break from the standard Pokemon formula and decided to head back to the Nintendo 64 to see if there were any other side games I might have missed out on before you know, heading into other consoles. Turns out there's only two left, Pokemon Puzzle League and this curious little title called Hey You Pikachu. Now, as some of you may already know, I'm not terribly big on puzzle games. Unless it's Tetris, I'm often approaching those kind of games with, with a worried eye. They're just not my cup of tea, so unless you guys want a super half-hearted review of the game, I decided not to bother. I mean, I'm still willing to at least give it a try if you folks really want it. You know, tell me in the comments or on my Twitter if you want. But I decided to look at Hey You Pikachu for today's sidetrack instead because I had no idea what I was getting into with this one. But after finally playing the game for today, all I can say is, damn, I really should have looked at Pokemon Puzzle League instead. So this is Hey You Pikachu, developed by Umbrella that- oh god damn it, they got me! My only recollection of this game was that it was released around the same time a special Pikachu branded N64 made the rounds because Pikachu was the de facto Pokemon and the one that made all the money. I also remember it coming with a microphone. Hey You Pikachu was one of the only games to use the N64's VRU, the Voice Recognition Unit. The other game was the Japanese only Densha de Go 64, a train simulator that had its admittedly cool looking gimmick controller and was originally a Dreamcast title that was ported to the N64, which is always a little odd to me. I know it's not that much of an uncommon in practice, but to jump back to the N64 from the Dreamcast is a little dramatic. The VRU basically is a microphone though. It has this little plastic strap that I think connects to the rumble pack if you have it, but it's fine if you don't. This game doesn't ask for much, it really doesn't. The game involves you as this youngster testing out Professor Oak's new device called the Poke Helper, allowing you to directly communicate with Pokemon. You end up befriending this wild Pikachu you come across in the outskirts of Viridian Forest, and from this point on, you and Pikachu just do shit. But for the N64, the, the game looks fine. It's riddled with slowdown, though. I think it might be worse than Pokemon Snap, really, but it's got color and detail down. And there's not much music to go around, but what's here is nicely composed and does a good job in selling the relaxing atmosphere. Pikachu himself is filled with a good amount of personality and is rocking decent animation. Oh god, except when he's trying to give me a victory sign. Oh god, what is going on with his limbs? He's got man hands! What is this? This is the precursor to Manchu. And I never thought I'd bring up Manchu in any capacity. Okay, so Pokemon was always a game designed for the young crowd, but this game is for the really young crowd. I'm talking kindergartners and such, because Hey You Pikachu is mostly a digital pet simulator. You and Pikachu head to different parts of the area and do several recreational tasks using a combination of items you're given, like a, a cupcake for affectionate lunch breaks, a megaphone gun, I know what I said, and of course the microphone to command Pikachu to do certain things. The game is very laid back, however, and doesn't require much energy or brain power to spend on, although you'll need a healthy dose of patience if you want the VRU to work properly. My first red flag was the Pokemon quiz show. You can direct Pikachu to your TV in the bedroom and, using the microphone, test your knowledge on Pokemon names. Can you get all 10 right? The answer is... Fuck you. This feels like it works when it wants to. I know my generation won Pokemon. With how many times I listen to the PokeRob, you bet your ass I do. But no matter how clear I said Vaporeon or Slowbro, the game didn't pick it up and treat it as if I got it wrong. Don't give me that look. I said the right thing, but you want to hit the wrong button, so it's your fault, you klutz. 
There's one minigame where you have to guide Pikachu to this pinata to break it open. Listen, this shit is adorable. I can't deny that, but this is a roll of the dice. You can spend all day telling Pikachu to go left, right, or stay the course, but it's like the blindfold is also impairing his hearing. You're better off telling him to use the force and feel that shit out. Luckily, this Pikachu does seem to be a fan of Star Wars. There's a handful of other missions to do throughout the adventure with varying difficulties. A Pokemon picnic has you and Pikachu looking for ingredients to help this Bulbasaur make a tasty meal. I never took Bulbasaur to be a chef. When you find the right ingredient, Pikachu asks if it's okay to give it to this Magnemite who's acting as a delivery boy. The ingredients change with the difficulty and they're not terribly hard to find, the main issue is the damn microphone. Pikachu, for the life of him, cannot understand the word yes sometimes. Even though he's got his hands on the right vegetable, he even doodled the damn thing to help me remember so he should know it's the right one from the get-go, so why is he asking me for the okay? No, he'll just put it down and move along because Pikachu just likes to do what he wants sometimes and this game becomes a glorified screensaver. I feel this is most apparent with Field Trip, a mission where I think you have to water these oddishes enough times with a water can to get them to evolve into glooms and vile plumes. I say I think because it's all dependent on whether Pikachu notices the damn oddishes in the first place. You can help direct Pikachu to a general area when you call out to him. You know, sometimes it's as easy as getting close to the mic and saying, over here, dipshit. But sometimes he'll just do jumps, completely ignoring you, or he'll fall asleep, whatever. Sometimes it's not even an oddish on the ground, it's just a regular radish. And sometimes he'll trip over a diglet and waste everyone's time. God damn it! Ah! Caring for Caterpie is one of the more brain dead activities. You're babysitting a bunch of Caterpies and when they get hungry, you gotta help Pikachu get some flowers for them to munch on. If they're out of reach, you have to command Pikachu to use Thunderbolt to knock them down. And you know, that's actually pretty fun. For a moment, you feel like a genuine Pokemon trainer issuing your Pokemon to attack. This also goes for the treasure hunt missions where you have to command Pikachu to do whatever the sign says to get the treasure chest to open. Thundershock, Thunderbolt, doing a little dance, open says me. In another game with better technology, I can see that being a cool way of having Pokemon deliver attacks. But back to the Caterpie watch, you just keep feeding the Caterpie until the Butterfree gets back home and you're on your merry way. <laughs> Little lost polywag, where you have to look for these missing polywag and return them to this polyworld. It's just you, your Pikachu, and a whole bunch of nothing. The polywags are next to impossible to pinpoint with this kind of draw distance and lag, so you're spending most of your time just wandering around this swamp, and I think you have to make sure it's Pikachu that notices them and not you, because they don't give a shit about you. Occasionally you'll get this Haunter that pops in, and I think he scares the Poliwag away if you have any, but you can get him to go away if you get Pikachu to give him a Thunderbolt, if Pikachu feels like doing it anyway. Well, that just leaves the most recreational of recreational activities, fishing. And there's really nothing to this. Pikachu casts this line, and when you get a bite, you tell Pikachu to reel it in when it's close, or to hang on when it's a juicy motherfucker. The problem is, the bigger prizes aren't really catchable without upgrading your fishing rod, but to do that, you need to purchase this lucky rod from Abra's shop. You earn money by collecting trinkets awarded to you by completing missions with high ranks. Rubies, marbles, chocolate coins, everything except for actual money I noticed, but I guess everything is currency to Pokemon in some regard. That trade market must be very interesting. Interesting. Buying something in Abra shop isn't as easy as choosing something and going about your business. No, Pikachu has to choose the item himself, and then you have to tell him if that's what you want, and Jesus Christ. No, Pikachu the lucky hook. Get the lucky hook, baby. It's right there. That one in the center. No. <sighs> All right, now we got to head back to the shop tomorrow because Abra hates repeat customers on the same day. I guess the hook, Pikachu the hook. Get the hook, not the Hoenn Trumpet. God damn it, Pikachu. <laughs> Yeah, play your little dudes, that's fine, but we need to get that lucky hook. We gotta catch that seeking, otherwise you're eating Bulbasaur's mystery soup again, and I know it gives you the screaming shits. Your ass literally becomes a rocket with that. Yes! Yes! The lucky hook! That's the one! Buy it! Buy it! Come on, we gotta go! Yes! Yes! Oh my god, that was for buying an item! Buying an item! I've had better luck getting late night food at a drive through that's all there is to the game though, when you're not doing any of those missions, you're spending time in your bedroom looking at all the items you collected throughout the journey and messing around with Pikachu. He could be a rude little shit though, you can give him something to play with and he'll just toss it to the side, not caring about property damage. He could throw all your tissues around the floor, which hits me on a personal level seeing as I got this little demon right here that loves to unravel my toilet paper rolls if I leave the bathroom door open. Ah, get away from that! Pikachu can run around the room aimlessly, not listening to a word you say, which I guess is standard as we discussed earlier and- What was that? What was that? What is he doing? Wait, what is that? Is he throwing his shit at me? What the fuck? Pikachus do that? That's disgusting. Bulbasaur, my man, your cooking's turning Pikachu's ass inside out. I'm pretty sure Raichus wouldn't throw their steaming doo-doo butt mud at me. Apparently, there is an ending to this game where Professor Oak makes you release Pikachu back into the wild, which makes zero sense to me. This guy is usually all about helping humans bond with Pokemon and gladly gives other kids Pokemon for training, but he wants me to send this one back? What the shit? 
But to even view this, you apparently need to wait a whole year in game. Every time you complete a mission, you head back home and call it a night. That's considered a whole day, and I gotta do that 365 times? God damn. Although there's speedrunners who can finish it in less than two hours, so maybe there's another way? I don't know. I don't have that patience for that sort of thing. I got bored after day 37. This game is boring, what more can I say? Even for something designed for children, I don't see their attention spans lasting long enough to deal with a Pikachu that can do whatever the hell he wants whenever he feels like it. Sure, there is charm of playing around with the dude, you know, using a beach ball or watching him play some musical instruments, sure, but for how long? Though, if you want to scare the shit out of your kid, try tilting the cartridge when the game is on. If you didn't know, tilting the cartridge with N64 games is infamous for producing some hilarious shit. Check out GoldenEye videos if you want to see for yourself. Now, I couldn't produce any results on my behalf, all I got was freezing and all that, but this game could become the stuff of nightmares when you get it just right. Look it up on YouTube, just not in the middle of the night because, woo, Hey You Pikachu isn't really a game. It's more of a footnote. I'm glad I didn't waste money on this. I asked my brother Elliot if I could borrow his copy and microphone so you know he wasted money. But again, if you really want me to look at Pokemon Puzzle League for this marathon, then all you gotta do is let me know in the comments below or on my Twitter page. It's some call me John. But next time, uh, we're gonna be stepping into the GameCube era with Pokemon Coliseum. From what I hear, it's quite a, a hefty adventure in its own way, so this might take me a while. Well, in the meantime, uh, I guess uh, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you all next time. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. I can't take it anymore. Fill it in! He talks to Pikachu, Pikachu listens. Pikachu, come here! I thought I was man's best friend. Great job! Pikachu. Meanwhile, I'm getting fat, I walk myself. Where's the love?